Welcome to a late show, everybody. I am your host, Stephen Colbert. Folks, I don't have to tell you, a lot changed on January 6th, 2021. How we see each other as Americans, my underwear, risk assessment. Case in point, today, particularly tense day in Washington, D.C., because yesterday the Capitol Police announced that they had obtained intelligence about a QAnon plot to breach the U.S. Capitol again. Come on, QBs. Remember what Einstein said. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, but expecting different results. Also, QAnon, those people are crazy. <laughs> because the inauguration used to be on March 4th, according to Cuspiracy Theorist, today was the day the former POTUS would be restored to the presidency. That did not happen. But he was restored as customer of the month at the Palm Beach KFC Taco Bell. <laughs> now, while they took these threats seriously, federal officials did describe them as more aspirational than operational, which explains why the QAnon message boards were filled with inspirational messages like, live, laugh, loot Nancy Pelosi's office, and hang Mike Pence in there, baby. <laughs> now, were these plans ever real? Who knows? But out of an abundance of caution, the House canceled today's legislative session. It's kind of like a domestic terrorism snow day in that they're both dangerous and white. And I understand why they want to be extra cautious. We're learning more about the troubling failure to protect Congress during the January 6th riot. For instance, yesterday, the commander of the D.C. National Guard testified before the Senate about what delayed his troops from coming to the rescue. At 1.49 p.m., I received a frantic call from then Chief of United States Capitol Police, Stephen Sun. Immediately after that 1.49 call, I alerted the U.S. Army senior leadership of the request. The approval for Chief Sun's request would eventually come from the acting Secretary of Defense and be relayed to me by Army senior leaders at 5.08 p.m., about three hours and 19 minutes later. The Pentagon didn't send help for three hours and 19 minutes. When the call for help came in, had the Joint Chiefs just pressed play on the Irishman? <laughs> Who's calling? Uh, let it go to voicemail. I want to see Joe Pesci get young. <laughs> and is this, Chris, is this true? I'm being told we have a recording of the Pentagon's outgoing voicemail. Thank you for calling the Pentagon. If you lost the keys to your aircraft carrier, press one. If this is an emergency, press two, and we'll send help in. Three hours. Please hold, your coup is important to us. Now one thing has been swift, and that's justice for the rioters. And I'll give you the latest in tonight's seditionist roundup roundup. I have a beef with Moo and on. First up, Remember this insurrectionist idiot who put his feet up in Nancy Pelosi's office? He's a self-described white nationalist named Richard Big O Barnett. Big O because total zero was already taken. As you might expect from a guy who bragged on camera about his crimes, he's been tossed in prison. And today, in court, he showed true contrition about the seriousness of his crimes. I'm just kidding. He cried like a big old baby, yelling, they're dragging this out, they're letting everyone else out, insisting that it's not fair that he is still in jail, and saying, this has been a bunch of crap. Not true, big O. The bunch of crap was smeared on the walls of Congress, and they arrested that guy, too. Turns out, Chief District Judge Beryl Howell used to work in the Capitol on the Senate Judiciary Committee, so she may have been more offended by the assault than others. Ooh, that's a spot of bad luck, buddy. That's like the Kool-Aid man on trial for destruction of property facing Judge Roger Brickwall. Oh, no. Next up on the corral of consequences, QAnon shaman and man on the endangered dumbass list. Jacob Chansley. Chansley's been in federal custody since January. Here's what he looks like now. Oh, wow. Is there such a thing as a glow down? It's like finding out Attila the Hun was actually Attila Hunningberg's substitute teacher. Chansley gave an interview from jail to the news program 60 Minutes Plus on America's beloved new streaming service, 
Paramount Plus. Hey, everybody! It's Plussy, the Paramount Plus mascot. Hey, Plussy! Why doesn't he talk? Oh, I forgot. For budgetary reasons, they cut out his larynx. <laughs> Goodbye, Plussy. Goodbye. The shaman had a unique take on his actions during the Capitol insurrection. My actions on January 6th, how would I describe them? Well, I sang a song, and that's a part of shamanism. It's about um, creating positive vibrations in a sacred chamber. I also stopped people from stealing and vandalizing that sacred space, the Senate. Okay, I actually stopped somebody from stealing muffins out of the, out of the break room. Oh, thank God. <laughs> he saved Congress's muffins. It reminds me of the dramatic second verse of the Star-Spangled Banner. Gave proof through the fight that the brand was still there. Oh, say, does that crumb-spangled snack tray yet stay with the little Debbie cakes and the chips from Frito-Lay? Throw them in jail! But despite destroying his life on the ex-president's invitation, Chansley hasn't given up on his man. He cares about the American people. And that's also why it, you know, wounded me so deeply and why it disappointed me so greatly that I and others did not get a pardon. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. But if it makes you feel any better, the only reason he didn't pardon you is that he doesn't care about you at all. <laughs> a lot of people have made that mistake, but they got alimony. Hey, now it's time for Space News, Rocket Edition. Go say hi to Plussy. <laughs> Yesterday, there was a new space achievement for Tesla founder and world's richest steamed dumpling, Elon Musk. Musk's company, SpaceX, launched a prototype of its signature orbital vehicle, the Starship rocket. This is the Phillips head version. SpaceX's unmanned rockets distinguish themselves by delivering their payload and then landing back on their fins, Buck Rogers style, so they can be reused. It's super exciting. Starship is the latest and the largest of these to be attempted. And although the first two Starship prototypes were destroyed on landing, third time's the charm. Wow. Oh, a little bobble on the landing. Judges are going to take off two-tenths of a point for that. But they did it. What an incredible achievement. Even managing to land on one engine. So congratulations to Musk and everyone at SpaceX for a safe landing. I am ready to buy my ticket. And oh! Put that away. Maybe put that away for now. A few wrinkles left to iron out. Last week, the House approved Biden's $1.9 trillion COVID stimulus package, but now it's being held up in the Senate by Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson, seen here in his pupa state. <laughs> Yesterday, Johnson announced that he would delay a vote on getting Americans much-needed COVID relief by forcing Senate clerks to read the more than 600-page bill out loud. That takes guts. Reminds me of the classic film, Mr. Smith forces Senate clerks to go to Washington. While it's awful to deny the American people desperately needed relief in such a petty way, maybe he's not that much of a douchebag. Perhaps it's just Ron Johnson's way of telling us he can't read. It's nothing to be ashamed of, Senator. We're sending LeVar Burton. Johnson's big issue with the stimulus bill is the price tag, which he explained on the Senate floor in the dumbest way possible. The thickness of a dollar bill is 4.3 thousandths of an inch thick. If you stack the million dollar bills on top of each other, they would be, they would stack up to be 358 feet high. We're talking about $1.9 trillion, which would stack up to 135,732 miles high. Now, Madam President, the distance to the moon is 238,900 miles. Okay, I didn't get a lot from that. <laughs> other than I think the stimulus will be paid out in singles. So don't forget to wear a G-string and shake them up.
House Democrats have been on a bit of a roll lately. Before they bugged out of town today, they were extremely busy with the lawmaking last night. First, they passed a landmark bill on voting rights, elections, campaign finance, and ethics reform titled H.R. 1. H.R., of course, stands for House of Representatives, and 1 stands for the number of black people the GOP will let vote if this bill doesn't become law. They also passed something called the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, which would ban chokeholds and qualified immunity and also create a national standard for policing. Oh, good. Policing should have at least the same level of standards as lunch meat. Surprisingly, this Democratic bill even got one Republican vote. Yes, take that, people who say the GOP doesn't care about black people, because when it came to valuing human life, at least one man had the heart to... I'm sorry, what's happening? The sole GOP vote said he accidentally pressed the wrong voting button. The wrong button? And he's a congressman? He's not fit to go on The Bachelor. I choose Amber. No, wait, Jessica, is it too late? Can I have Rose back? You got a problem, bro? But at least for one brief flickering moment, he made us think he had a conscience. And tonight, we honor that mistake. Tonight on A Late Show's Great Moments in Oops A Bravery, we take a look back at American heroes who were wrongly on the right side of history. June 6, 1944, Clifford T. Hinckley mistakenly boards a D-Day landing craft thinking he was embarking on a booze cruise. July 4, 1776, Jebediah Pearson signed the Declaration of Independence thinking it was a birthday card. March 7, 1965, Patrick O'Shea inadvertently joined the March on Selma, believing it was a St. Patrick's Day parade. And March 3rd, 2021, Texas Representative Lance Gooden accidentally voted for sensible police reform because no matter what his political affiliation, deep down he's too dumb to know how buttons work. His courageous stupidity will never be forgotten. We got a great show for you tonight. Jane Fonda is here, but when we come back, Meanwhile, join us, won't you?